why size matters. Three different <laughs> SMBs, three different sizes. Now, the point of an SMB is that we're visible on the surface. And the argument goes that a lot of the times we want a bigger SMB in higher waves um, or offshore. And that's true. The position you are under the water where you send up the SMB has a great, great influence. So these two yellow ones are my SMBs. And we have an extra one here just to uh, illustrate the point that color doesn't matter. This big one has a lot of lift and also demands a lot of pull from the diver to make it stand up. Because even though this is much bigger, we can all agree that the smaller one is still more visible if it's upright in the water. And that's the argument. So this one, if I look at one tiny little kilo of weight and I put that on this SMB, that's more than enough to make it stand up. It's even almost too heavy because it sits on the bottom here. So with a very little tension of the diver, this SMB is very lively on the surface. It just sits up and really pokes up high out of the water. Now, that one kilo on the bigger SMB has not such great of an influence. There we go. See, it doesn't make the SMB stand up. It just sits flat on the surface. I need to pull, I've just tested it with some other weights. I need to pull with at least two and a half kilos. There's a two, one kilo there. That's not even enough. I need to pull with almost three kilos of force to make this one stand up on the surface. And that is just not enough. I mean, if you're a diver that's neutrally balanced on the water, one kilo is about all you can do with breathing and, and, and comfort. Two kilos becomes tasking, three kilos is really making yourself negative in order for the SMB to stand up. And that's just not very safe practice if you need to give the SMB away, then you're too negative in gas switching procedures and stuff like that. So when would I use an SMB like this? I do have this on me on dives when I go offshore, big waves. Let's take the weight belt and the other weight away. Because what I do then is I use the little one to make my ascent. And then as soon as I'm on the surface and still want to make myself even more visible, I take this little hook, hook it onto my uh, crotch D-ring. And then it sits, because I'm sitting, and then it sits nice and proud on the surface, if I'm under the water. And that way I can keep myself even more visible than with the smaller SMB. The SMB here is a tiny bit wider. It's, it's like a hand width when it's folded up um, than the other ones. And it still also requires around about a kilo, kilo and a half for it to stand proud on the surface. Um, the reason we don't want too much weight pulling them down also is because you can imagine the further I pull this down on the water in order to make it stand proud on the surface, the bigger surface area I have under the water and if there is a surface current that's going to create a huge amount of drag for me. So in the design of this SMB, um, even though it's love the design with the dolphin on top, the fact that you have a big piece standing underneath the water, even though you're not pulling much, it still creates about a kilo, kilo and a half, is a lot of surface area for it to be able to pull, pull on you as a, uh, as a diver. So what we're looking for is a design where the excess uh, fabric that is underneath the SMB uh, is held to a minimum. Short little video that explains or maybe explains why you should use certain sizes of SMBs. People sometimes regard these smaller like one meter SMBs as oh, that's only training SMB or these, these one meter buoys are only used for that. Well, I would disagree. Like this one for example. 
that's laying flat on the surface. Imagine there's high waves, it doesn't take much to cover this buoy up in the waves. I would still say that a yellow one that's thinner but higher up is more visible that's bouncing on the surface like this. Short little video on the size of SMBs and I guess size does matter.